Canadians love winter. And YouTube Space Toronto is making us feel at home by putting up some winter scenes, which seems like a perfect opportunity to share some winter photo tips. I invited a few experts to drop by. All right, Neil, thanks. Um, got the camera, got the gloves, got a scarf. I think I'm going to be warm and ready to go. Mo, what have you got? Martin, you do look set up, but I want to talk about what happens when we go into really cold and wet uh, environments. So I brought along the D5, uh, and the reason why this digital SLR camera uh, is, is so fantastic is the water sealant capabilities that it has mm. on it. Um, and so the D5 is always the rig I take into the field when I'm working in cold, uh, and really wet places. But I also want to talk about how to keep oneself warm. Right. So, you know, important to have a jacket, uh, important to have those layers. Uh, but I also bring this into the field. So your sort of typical uh, umbrella that I use, uh, if I'm lucky enough to have an assistant with me, uh, we pop this out and we were able to stay a lot drier. So right, right. Um, it might seem uh, a little gimmicky to bring an umbrella along, but uh, it's always worth it. And the only trouble you have with it is getting onto the airplane. Right, that's a problem. Uh, I've also brought uh, a few cloths in here to explain uh, uh, explain my, my tiered system uh, of cloths. Uh, you got I, one too, great. Cloth, yeah. yeah, so what Keep I do with these going. guys is I put them in different pockets. Uh, and Sorry, so did you say tiered system of cloths? It's a tiered system of cloths, <laughs> okay, yeah. Good. So I take, uh, I'll, I'll have one cloth that I know I can use right away to get off most of the wetness, most of the snow. Um, then I put that away and I'll pull out a second cloth that allows me to uh, fine-tune some of that a bit uh, and then of course I've got that third cloth that allows me to get the lens buttons and right. things like this so it's a three-tiered system because one of them is normally wetter than the other and it frustrates right. me when yeah. I pull a cloth out and it's too wet. Right. Do you keep them all in the same pocket? I put them in different pockets if I'm really in the zone I put them in different pockets so I know which one's drier and which one's right. which one's more wet. Um, I've also got uh, hand warmers that I come into those. the fields yep. Um, you know, the typical thing is to put them into your pockets, but I like to put them into my boots. Ah, no, I, can, I do put them in my pockets just so I can warm my hands up again. Yeah, yeah you bet. Drop it into your boot next time and ah, it'll keep your feet warm as well. Right. Uh, and then the last item I have here today is, uh, is a really big waterproof bag because, of course, you know, that inclement flurry or it starts to rain suddenly on you, you want to be able to put your gear into a bag that's going to keep things right. dry. So. This is my kit. Very these are, the, these are, the, the, these are the, the tricks of, of, of my kit. Are your portraits in snow scenes slightly underexposed? Or is your snow coming out a little bit gray? There's a way to fix that with most digital cameras. And in most cases, a digital camera will actually have a scene position designed specifically for snow scenes. So in this particular camera, I would just go into my menu and select one of the scene positions that shows it as being snow. And what that'll make sure is, and ensure is that my scene is completely, that the snow is nice and white, but that my faces are nice and well exposed and that my um, skin tones are accurate. You may at times also require to use a little bit of fill flash to ensure that you don't have underexposed features. But many of the professional or the higher end cameras have a custom white balance feature in it as well. And in cameras like this one, you would go into white balance settings and you would then see custom white balance. And what that allows you to do is to use the snow itself as your white card. You can also use a gray card. And this is probably your best solution. This will ensure that everything is very well balanced. But in a pinch, you can always use the snow as your scene to ensure that you have everything well balanced for your portraits. I've learned so much about shooting in winter through many failed attempts. Over all those mishaps, I actually got it. I used three pairs of gloves. The first one is a grippy kind of glove that is touch sensitive. Then I have a photography glove, which has the uh, thumb and index finger that snap back into magnets. And then on top of the, third, the second glove goes the third one, which I cut the fingertips off so that the, uh, these fingers actually go through them. So three, three gloves. Second thing is battery. So with battery, I always use external battery packs to power my camera. Many Sony cameras actually have USB charging. So as long as there's a battery inside the camera, you, can, you, you connect your cable up and then you connect the USB and away you go. So now that we have the warmth issue figured out, we have our shooting issue. All right, you get out there and everything is white. How are you gonna take a well-exposed picture in snow. You have to actually overcompensate. 
So you have to increase your exposure by minimum one to two stops. Even if you have all your settings set correctly, there's still a huge dynamic range to deal with in this situation. Sony has an auto HDR exposure compensation that goes from off to an EV correction of one all the way up to six. So you can actually compensate for up to six stops. Once you select the setting, press the shutter. The camera takes three images, combines them into one. If it's too much or not enough, make the adjustment until you get the image you want. An important thing to consider when photographing winter scenes and snow in general is that you want to make sure that the tones of whites are bright and don't turn gray. Most camera meters will average out the scene that they meter and basically would make white tones grayish and black tones also grayish. So basically what you want to do is you want to force that white to be brighter. I'm using the Lumix GX85 here and it allows me to easily and quickly see the scene real time and adjust for that. If I put my meter at a white scene, you'll see the histogram is straight down the middle of the line because it's averaged out. It's kind of gray in the middle. With the GX85 is a histogram that I can move anywhere I want so I can see real time the exposure and if it's on an area by default that I'm critical focusing on, I can move it around out of the way. On the back button of the GX85, you push it, there's, it gives you the option to perform exposure compensation and exposure compensation basically allows you to under or overexpose your photo purposely. As I force the exposure to the right, say approximately two stops, now my histogram shows proper whites, it's brighter, and you want to get your histogram as far to the right as possible without actually hitting the edge of the window there. There's also in the back screen your bracketing option, which will allow you to take a series of photos under or overexposed. And there's different options for how many photos you want to take. And put on your toques and mitts and get out there shooting. One of the things that can really add some magic to your winter photos is when you catch the falling snow in the picture. Like in this photo, one of my favorites. The snow falling through the shot really gives it the feeling of winter. But how do you capture those falling snowflakes? It's not that hard, but there are a few things to think about, and the most important thing is shutter speed. A slow shutter speed, say 1 60th of a second, will usually give you a photo where the falling snow is blurred, like this shot. That can add some drama to a shot, but a faster shutter speed, say 1 25th or 2 50th of a second, will freeze the snowflakes so they hang in the air but shutter speed isn't the only factor. Zooming in will make the snow more prominent in the shot and make the separate snowflakes more distinct. Here's a snow scene shot at a wide angle setting and here's the same shot after I zoomed in. You can see that the snow is a lot more visible in the second shot. But what about aperture? If you use a small aperture, say f16, you'll get more snowflakes in focus. However, using a big aperture like f4 gives you less depth of field so you can get a photo with a few sharp snowflakes in front of a soft looking backdrop. Next, the falling snow will be a lot more visible if you can choose a dark background. The snow just stands out better as you can see in this shot. Those are the basic techniques for catching falling snowflakes in your shot, but every scene is different. There are even different kinds of snowfalls like driving snow or gentle snow that just floats down. So experiment a little with your shutter speeds and f-stops to get the shot you want. Take a lot of shots and you'll come back with something suitable for framing. So I just got back from a trip to Germany. I was covering the Christmas markets there and I filmed a number of videos about my experience which you guys can check out when you have the chance. But what I love about Christmas markets is just that magical feeling that they have and they're perfect for photography especially if you love night photography or light photography. So in terms of my setup uh, I always set my camera to manual mode. Uh, I will choose the widest angle lens that I have on me at the time 16 to 30 35 is perfect especially for markets or European cities and a tripod is really essential for this type of photography. My aperture I tend to try to keep between an f16 or f22. Um, I really find that this is great when you're trying to get those beautiful light starburst effect on your on your photograph that the smaller the aperture you have the, the more precise that that light beam will look. For shutter speed, it will depend on the subject matter. For the Christmas markets, I'll want something maybe around one second to five seconds, and I want to expose it for 
the mid tones or the mid brightness of the photo. You're going to want to test out though your shutter speeds for this. Um, I find I will take a variety of shots with different shutter speeds because I may like a, sh a shorter one versus a longer shutter speed and it depends on how all the other lights are working uh, within the frame. I also find that the best time to do some of this photography is around twilight just after the sun sets so you have a little bit of that dark navy blue sky it helps bring out the contrast with the light that's happening in the rest of your scene so that you don't have a black backdrop uh, to your sky one of my favorite shots I got during my trip was from the Christmas market in Aachen. And what I loved about the shot was I was able to get an overhead perspective of the market. Luckily for me, City Hall was right here in the center of the city. So I was able to get in and up to the second floor to get this shot. I had my camera on the tripod and then I arranged my settings so that it would be exposed enough so that I could pick up the light within the market, but not overexpose that. Now to make this photo pop even more, a lot of work was actually done in post. So I reduced the shadows and I upped the ambiance and the vibrancy of the colors. And I played around a little bit with the white balance just so I get that nice sort of cool hue, but still keeping the warmth of the lights of the Christmas market. Cause that's really what makes the photo so special. Shooting video in the winter can be challenging, particularly if you'd like to keep your shutter speed at 1 60th and your aperture open for a defocused background. Even with ISO 100, I find shooting on snowy, sunny days to be impossible without an ND filter. There are cameras that have built-in ND, otherwise choose from one of two types. A filter, which screws directly onto the lens. It needs to match the diameter of the lens. This Fuji is 77 millimeters. ND filters are sold by numbers, corresponding to reductions in light. An ND8 filter will reduce light by three stops, ND16 is four stops. And there are variable filters, which can be adjusted in the field. There are also square filters that slide into holders. This Koken system has a 72 mm mount, and I'm using an adapter to fit it onto this 55 mm Nikon lens. There are adapters available for all standard lens diameters, and the adapters cost less than filters. As well, I can use multiple filters. For example, I can add a graduated ND, which is darker at the top than the bottom, a very useful option for managing a bright sky. I hope this inspires you to keep shooting all winter long. Thanks for watching. Questions, comments, use the field below. I do read and reply to all civil and relevant comments. Now, let me put my snowshoes on for the trek home.